Hi YTPC, you'll notice I haven't got a pipe tonight. I watched a video by um, the 2AM Piper on the pat pipe on the patio and Onion was folding a flake and I noticed he did it slightly different to me. So I thought I'd show you the way I fold a flake to stuff a pipe. First of all, I've got some Erin Moore flake. It's a lovely, dark, rich flake. I've got two flakes there. What I do is fold it in half, the same as onion. Fold it in half again. Now at this point, onion stuffs his flake in his pipe. I don't. I break the flake up a bit by squeezing it and kneading it. So you can see it's sort of in bits. It's still folded in half, it's still complete, but there's more sort of splits in it in the side. So now, when I stuff it in the pipe, And twist it or just make sure it's in. There's a lot more loose sort of ends at the top. So whereas Onion had quite a bit of trouble having to keep relighting his because you do with the rolled flake. When you relight it when you light it rather, with this method it lights slightly easier. Now you'll notice I haven't tamped it because I, I don't often tamp at the beginning of a pipe. I know it's tradition and I know people say you should but I think if it's a light try and keep it a light and as usual when you're trying to show somebody something it never bloody works. So, what I'll do is just tamp it a little bit, or just fold it in a little bit. So, we've had the charring light, which I said I don't often do, because I took the pipe out of my mouth to talk. Now you'll see it's well lit. But I don't mind if I look if I have to light a flake twenty times. because the two flakes I've used in there will last maybe an hour and a half, two hours. It's 
that's one of the great advantages of smoking a flake. Because the light takes its time going down the light of tobacco, so it goes down, burning sort of through the flake slowly. This is quite a rich smoke, and I think it's probably um, Erin Moore Flake, and I think it might be slightly strong, I don't know, because as I say, I don't often suffer with um, nicotine hits. I'm going to have to relight it. But if you want to compare the two, have a look at Onion's video. And I hope that you'll see this might be slightly different. I get a lovely leathery taste, a lovely rich taste from Erin Moore. The other thing that would have helped is if I'd have dried it off for a bit and allow it to, dr uh, allow it to dry, but I don't often do that. Um, I don't know why, but I, I used to feel, you know, smoke it as it comes. And I'm smoking this in my Einstein pipe. I don't know whether you can see that, but it's got E equals MC squared on the side. It's a nine millimeter filter. Leaves a lovely taste, a lovely aftertaste in the um, saliva, in the tongue, and in the um, the mouth as a whole. Keep trying to blow smoke rings. I'm not very good yet. I hope to get to the stage where Gandalf did, where I can do a yacht with full sails. But it's taking some doing. I received an appointment today for um, my examination with the gastro um, uh, well you know with a gastro surgeon I think he's going to want to put a tube down and up and I've decided that if he does then I'll, I'll say yes even though I hate the idea
but they want to check whether I'm bleeding um, anywhere in the system from the mouth down um, just to make sure that I haven't got a cancer down there because of the way I keep getting anemia. I'm fairly sure I haven't. I think if it's going to be anything, it will be my spleen. But I don't know. don't know at all. All I know is that I regularly get anemic. But we'll see. Um, as I've said before, it doesn't worry me. Um, the only thing that worries me is not liking having the procedure done. Um, partly because I have to drink something like two and a half litres of laxative to clear the system out. And you have to do that within a reasonable time. And it's, it's not easy. But by gow, it does work. You really feel pure inside. Anyway, I shall leave it here. I shall finish with my best wishes and blessings to you for the rest of the week and for a very, very good weekend. Have a great time at the weekend. Enjoy it if you've got time off. If you're working, well, I'm sorry about that, but still try and enjoy yourself. Um, there are always things that you can do at work. I mean, one of the things I did for the boss at the garden centre was those little things that you can buy, those little paper tube things that you can throw on, throw on the floor and they make a banging noise. They go lovely under toilet seats. You lift the seat and you just put it under, on the part of the seat that's touching the toilet. So when the boss sat down, he got greeted with four bangs. Boom, boom, boom. When I saw him after I'd left the garden centre and I went back one time and he said, how are you? And I said, I'm very well. And I said, how are you? And he said, I'm not bloody constipated anymore. So it seems to have worked. Anyway, a little joke for you. A little joke. Oh, yes, I know what I was going to say. There was a place in um, Ireland, countryside Ireland, where the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church had very little to do with each other. The two ministers got on well, the priest and the Protestant minister. And they used to meet occasionally for lunch. And on this particular day, the Roman Catholic priest said, we've got real trouble with the church. We're going to have to pull it down and rebuild. It's going to cost a lot of money. So the Protestants said, well, you know, how are you going to get the money? He said, well, we're asking for donations. He said, in fact, we're sending a letter to your church to see whether your congregation would give a donation. So the Protestant minister said, hmm, yeah. I'll, try and, I'll try and intercept it. And sure enough, the letter came. And the Protestant minister looked at it and said, would you like to give to our fund? We've got to pull down our own church and rebuild. So he sent a note back with £50 in it. And in the note it said, my congregation refuses to pay for the, the rebuilding of your church. But they're quite happy to give you £50 to help with the pulling down of your church. 